Hello everyone, Richard here at Kelvin Wazoo, where sometimes things can get a little shaky. And I know it's been a while, you know, uh, like three weeks since my last video was posted. Uh, but, you know, I haven't been buying a lot of new records recently. So, you know, no recent finds and that kind of thing. But, you know, I'm going to, I might do a video just about that subject soon because I've been noticing some other rumblings in the VC uh, about vinyl collecting in general. Anyway, we're back on track with Song X Song. And today we are going to be comparing, or I should say I will be comparing two records by Neil Young that are relatively close in his discography. And one of them being this one, American Stars and Bars. And then we're going to be putting it up against this one, Zuma. So each of these records, all right, uh, Zuma was released in November of 1975. I remember when I first got this record. I mean, just amazing, amazing record. And then Stars and Bars, which was released in June 1977. Uh, another really, really solid album. Both of these are backed up with Crazy Horse, which was the uh, probably the most well-known band that uh, backed up Neil Young. And, you know, that included uh, Frank San Pedro on guitars, Billy Talbot on bass, and Ralph Molina on drums. Now, guitarist Danny Witten, who had also been part of Crazy Horse, he had died by now of a heroin overdose. He died in uh, 1972. Now, uh, Zuma is mostly with Crazy Horse, and it was produced by David Briggs. Uh, and it's probably no surprise that most of my favorite Neil Young tracks uh, from all his albums are ones produced by David Briggs. Uh, but now a few other songs are, are different. They're not Crazy Horse. Pardon My Heart has Tin Drummond on the bass, and then Neil Young had all the other instruments. Uh, then Molina and Talbot provide some uh, backing vocals. Looking for a Love, that's produced by Tim Mulligan. And then uh, the closer on here through my sales is with Crosby, Stills, and Nash, with some congas provided by Russ Kunkel. Then we have American Stars and Bars which is uh, an album produced by Young Briggs and Mulligan. And it has a Crazy Horse with some other people added. For example, on side one, you have Crazy Horse and The Bullets. And The Bullets were the additional vocals that were provided by Linda Ronstadt, Nicolette Larson, and... Um, there was also some uh, violin by Carol Maedo, and then Ben Keith provides uh, some steel guitar. So the bullets were uh, primarily Ron Stant Larson and uh, Maedo. Uh, that was the name given them. And then we have side two, which uh, has Crazy Horse on the songs like a Hurricane and Homegrown. Uh, now, those were recorded, those two songs were recorded in 1975, okay? So this, that was like the year, you know, that Zuma was released. Uh, side one, all those songs were recorded in April of 1977. Um, and then the other songs that uh, have Crazy Horse plus others include The Star of Bethlehem. That was recorded in 1974, pretty early. Uh, for the these two releases. This is Crazy Horse plus Neil Young on acoustic guitar and vocals with Emmylou Harris providing vocals. 
uh, Ben Keith on dobro and vocals, Tim Drummond on bass, Carl T. Himmel on drums, and then uh, Elliot Mazur or Mazur uh, was the producer. And then the song Will to Live is from 1976, and that's just Neil Young. So, um, yeah, the um, Zuma was, as I said, 1975. In terms of release, it was the earlier album, although there are some tracks um, on, as I just noted, uh, America Star, American Stars and Bars that uh, were recorded at the same time as Zuma and, and prior to Zuma's release. So yeah, the two the two records um, are contemporaries. So let's uh, get down to this. I tell you from the beginning that I mean I really really have always loved Zuma. I mean the songs I would sing along with all the time uh, when I first got this uh, record. Uh, right about the time it was released, I believe, um, is when I picked this up. And yeah, I would just listen to it constantly, and it remains uh, one of my favorite Neil Young albums. Um, American Stars and Bars, I also picked this up at the time of its release, and I enjoyed it a lot. A friend of mine, we used to listen to this quite a bit, especially, you know, because the two of us, um, we were still, you know, in high school. And um, although Stars and Bars, that was after I graduated, that would have been in 1977. But, uh, you know, he and I did some like work during the summer between, you know, my ses my semesters at university and, and uh, but we would listen to this, well, uh, we we had a landscaping job, so we would so we would play the A track, uh, you know, and listen to this. But yeah, very good songs on here as well, you know. And then going into this, I was kind of thinking, you know, I'm probably gonna really like um, Zuma, you know, and it's gonna be the winner. But what I found going into this is that the, some of my favorite songs. And uh, each of these records were pitted against each other. And that made some of these decisions really, really difficult. Let's get started with track one, which on Zuma is Don't Cry No Tears. And then it's against the Old Country Waltz, uh, Stars and Bars. Old Country Waltz is a good song. You've got Linda Rodstadt. Ronstad, Nicola Larson, and Carol Maedo, they add really, really nice touch with their harmonies uh, in the song. But I've always loved Don't Cry No Tears. It's such a great opener. It's a very simple song. I would sing along with this. All, this is an album that I pretty much would sing along with, with all the songs. Uh, it, it just was that kind of a experience for me. So I'm going to go with Don't Cry No Tears for the win. So that puts Zuma ahead one song to zero from Stars and Bars. And then we get to track two, which is Saddle Up the Palomino from Stars and Bars. And then Danger Bird on Zuma. And, you know, this drawing that Neil Young created for the album uh, artwork, you know, this is sort of depicting Danger Bird. Um, and Danger Bird, I always liked the song, but I always also consider it probably the weakest song on the album. Um, then when we listen to Saddle Up the Palomino, San Pedro's guitar is really, really good because Neil Young is playing the acoustic guitar on this and San Pedro is playing electric guitar. So that's what you're hearing. And he's got some really strong playing, you know, on this. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a better song. 
I enjoy it much more. So, you know, after two songs, we're we're now tied with Stars and Bars at one and Zuma with one. Come to track three. Pardon My Heart from Zuma. And then Hey Babe uh, from Stars and Bars. Hey Babe is a very simple song. And it's okay. It's a pretty good song. Uh, ben Keith on slide guitar is just wicked. Really, really good. Pardon My Heart, though, is always so beautiful and powerful. Um, and, and, you know, it's just so quiet with this understated delivery and, and the delicate playing uh, that Neil is providing with that acoustic guitar. is just really, it's a really wonderful, sublime song. So, yeah, for me, it's Pardon My Heart for the win. So we got uh, Zuma with two songs to uh, one song on Stars and Bars. But track four from Stars and Bars is Hold Back the Tears. Hold Back the Tears. And then we have... Looking for a lover, but I haven't met her yet. Yeah, that's another just all-time favorite song of mine. Again, something that I always just immediately would start singing along with. It's just a, just a wonderful, great song. I do really like, though, the harmonizing that's going on with Hold Back the Tears. And even though it's it's the... Um, we've got, you know, the, the whole uh, group of uh, other vocalists uh, providing, you know, the backing vocals and, and, and things like that with the, bu uh, with the bullets. I, I get, I kind of feel like it's just Linda Ronstadt providing the backing vocals. I might be wrong. It could be all, all the women on the record, but it just kind of sounds like Ronstadt only. Um, and it's just such really lovely harmonizing going on there. So I love that duet part. Um, so it was a little bit difficult, but I still got to go with Looking for a Love. It's just a song that, um, I don't know, I, at the time that I was listening to this in my late teen years, uh, you know, entering my 20s, you know, I sometimes I... I, I'd be singing that and kind of projecting myself into the song. You know, I've been looking for a lover, but I haven't met him yet. Um, he'll be nothing like I pictured him to be. <laughs> you know? So, you know, I found myself doing that with uh, many, many songs, even though <laughs> at that time I was like, mm, ooh, you know, so deep in the closet, my... My ability to express myself was um, very limited, and, and that was a self-imposed limitation. But this music, it, it did. It provided me an outlet, and I guess that's why I, I was I, I connected with it so strongly. So yeah, we've got uh, Zuma with three songs, two stars and bars, uh, one. Well, then comes uh, Bite the Bullet from uh, Stars and Bars, and then we've got Barstool Blues from Zuma. No contest. It's Bite the Bullet. Barstool Blues, you know, still always really appealed to me, um, but it's it also has this kind of, like, shrieking tone to it, I guess, which is appropriate perhaps for the song. But yeah, it was just a little bit on the shrill side, uh, but bite the bullet, you know, and this is a staple in, in Neil Young concerts when he's touring with Crazy Horse. Um, yeah, and it, it's just got just a great rhythm and, and melod, simple melody to go with it. Yeah, so yeah, it's definitely bite the bullet. Uh, so that brings us to two for Stars and Bars, to Zuma with three. 
Then we get to side two for Zuma. And um, yeah, it's side two as well for uh, stars and bars. And this is when things really start getting difficult. We've got the opening track uh, for side two, Star of Bethlehem. And that's matched up against Stupid Girl. Stupid Girl, again, it's just one of those songs that I loved so much. It's simplicity, uh, and I would sing along with it. Um, Star of Bethlehem is a great song and such a sweet melody as well. And Emmy Lou Harris adds this sublime atmosphere to the song that's just really quite amazing. The music and guitar in Stupid Girl, very, very strong. That's, I just, that part of the song really appeals to me. Lyrically, it's kind of basic, not that not that imaginative in some respects. Um, and as I recall, I think Neil Young wrote the song when he was like 14. Um, so it's still kind of difficult because I do love Stupid Girl so much, but yeah, some of the lines are, you know, like the beautiful fish flopping on the desert sand, looking for the wave you missed. Another one is close at hand. I mean, I, I, I get the metaphor there, okay, but it just kind of, I don't know, kind of comes out of the, comes out of nowhere, I guess is the way I'd like to, to express it. So I'm going to go with uh, Star of Bethlehem for the win here. So now it is three songs, Stars and Bars, to three songs from Zuma. Um, then we come to track seven. We've got Drive Back. Drive Back. I wanna wake up with no one around. Um, and then Will to Love. Um, these two songs could not be more different from each other, yet it is really difficult for me to, to, to make a selection that, you know, one is better. I mean, Will to Live was recorded in Neil Young's Malibu Beach Home, not up at the ranch, but at his beach home, his beach house. And he was inside and he was recording it by a fire in the fireplace. So that's where you get the fire and the crackling sound. And it was just him um, and the guitar, and he, I guess he recorded it on a cassette, just a simple cassette player. Um, and then in the studio, um, added other instrumentation and voice. Um, it has a, so it's kind of, it's not a real polished recording, but it has this real subtle power. Um, it is really just a really beautiful song. And the atmosphere that it creates is, is really captivating. Um, Drive Back has got at its core that killer guitar. Neil Young is making Old Black just really grind. And it's really, really good. Uh, which again, you know, you've got this, um, you've got this one song on, on one hand that is this little quiet song by the fire in the fireplace. And then you've got this just snarling guitar and, and, the, and, and the lyrics. Um, also, Drive Back is recorded and produced better. Uh, you know, as I said, the other, uh, the other song, Will to Love, just simply being recorded on a cassette and, you know, in Neil Young's living room by a fire. He was uh, by himself. And then, <laughs> believe it or not, 
the cowbell in Drive Back is just, I just love it. Just right, perfect. You know, it's not, it's not necessarily heard throughout the song, but when you do hear it, it's the right time to be hearing it. Um, yeah, he's, and he's just hammering away on Old Black, that sound. Um, it, it scratches an itch, uh, you know, that no other guitarist, in, in my opinion, can. He's just got that about him. So I am going to go with Drive Back as the uh, better song. So now we are four songs on Zuma, two, three on Stars and Bars. Well, it doesn't get any easier for track eight, okay? Because track eight here is like a hurricane. And track eight here is Cortez the Killer. Oh, oh God. Man, both these songs have some really excellent and delicious guitar work. Um, like a Hurricane is a more personal song. Not necessarily personal for me, but it was a more personal song for Neil Young because it was about a real woman that he saw in the bar one night um, and he didn't approach her. He didn't talk to her. But, you know, when he left and went home, you know, the song just kind of came out of him. So... Yeah, it, it is really, Like a Hurricane really is that kind of reaction that he had to seeing this mysterious woman at the, at the bar uh, that so captivated him. Melodically, Cortez the Killer is stronger, okay? Melodically, musically. But, you know... The bottom line is Montezuma was not a wonderful guy, okay? Both he and Cortez were killers. So this romanticizing, to some degree, Montezuma, uh, you know, in portraying Cortez the killer solely as the only bad guy. I mean, Cortez was a bad guy. He was terrible. He was, he was vicious. He was murderous. Um... But, uh, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they were both killers, though. Montezuma, you know, I mean, that line about people work together and lifted many stone, you know, is kind of ludicrous to me because the people who built the Aztec temples, they didn't, they had no choice, to, but, you know, to do this. It wasn't like... This is, oh, yeah, I'm going to my job today. No, they, they, this was slave labor, all right, driven by Montezuma and his priests, probably, and this desire uh, for power. So this romanticizing the Aztecs just because they left behind these beautiful and gigantic monuments really kind of bugs me, uh, you know, as the undercore, despite the fact that it's a really wonderful song. And also the concept that they sacrificed people so that others could go on. It's such bullshit to me. I mean, it's just more religious poppycock. And both Montezuma and Cortez were driven by religion. It was behind... Whatever their, their dogma was, even though they were quite different dogmas, they were religious beliefs that drove their, their murderous greed. So I love Cortez the Killer for its melody, for the structure of the song. The lyrics just always kind of bugged me because, as I, as I say, Montezuma was not a nice guy. Uh, and for all we know, he could have been uh, even worse than Cortez because we don't have any, you know, people wrote about Cortez and there really hasn't been anyone around to write about Montezuma. Um, 
So I'm going to go with a Hurricane for the win. Uh, just amazing guitar work going in there. Even though the production on the song is a little, um, a little less refined, and the guitar playing is a little, I guess it's more genuine to me, even though it is a little more ragged. Uh, so we're we're tied now. Stars and bars with four. Uh, to Zuma with four. It's raining outside now, so you might hear the little pitter patter of the rain on my um, air conditioning unit. So there you go. Uh, tied up, and we're coming to the last on each. Again, really difficult choice because we've got uh, from Zuma through my sales. And then Homegrown from Stars and Bars. Now, Homegrown is a great rocker. It is, I loved listening to that song. It's a great song to, to play when you're outside working, you know? I mean, it's really kind of a cool work song. And Through My Sales is a really beautiful closer. The songs, you know, the melody is softer, the voices are softer, the instrumentation is is softer, you know, it's approaching what we would call pianissimo. Um, the songs are really very different, uh, you know, compared with the, the loud rocker that we got here. The other thing I really enjoy about Through My Sales um, which is Neil with Crosby, Stills, and Nash, is it's a great closer. It's just the perfect song for the end of the album. And, you know, Homegrown's a great song, but it doesn't have the same... Um, it doesn't have that same quality as being a closer that uh, I get from Through My Sales. So there's the, there's the song that nudges... Uh, Zuma to be the top uh, record or the more preferred record in my opinion because uh, through my sales for the win so that means Zuma has five to my uh, four for stars and bars um, to be quite honest I was a bit surprised that it was so close I really kind of thought that um, Zuma would be a clear winner in, in my opinion, and I would have a clear preference for it. And, you know, it was kind of that way with side one, but when I got to side two and I realized what songs were matched up against each other, it was just really, you know, really, really difficult. You know, another time I do this, I might pick more Zuma songs. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be Zuma for the win. Share your thoughts, please, in the Down Under by leaving a comment. I really enjoy getting the comments. And also, remember that you can follow me on Instagram, where I go by the handle of NewsDude76. That's N-E-W-Z-D-U-D-E-7-6. I also have a Facebook page called Calvin Wazoo, where I am not only posting these videos, but other music-related articles and video content. And, uh, hey, hit the thumbs up button, please, because it really helps with uh, the distribution uh, algorithm. Even if you're already subscribed, hitting uh, that like button, the thumbs up button, is a great help. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. You know, hey, I'm not going to be bombarding your, your feed necessarily with, with a lot of stuff. Um, so there you go. These two records, really, really good records all the way around. I just find Zuma's, a, you know, a little bit better. So I hope you have enjoyed this, and I'll see you around next. And remember to pray for the people inside your head, for they won't be there when you're dead.